featured artist is Alice Clark Heineke. And then I did my graduate work at UCLA in Los Angeles, and that's where I lived most of my adult life. Your first degree, was it in engineering? It was in physics. Physics, okay. Yes. I started as an art major. So art, I went from art to physics to art. Yes, I yeah. chose art. But I have occasionally gone back and working in sciences. Uh, this one over here, uh, that's a lab at Xerox. And I was still in college when that event that's depicted happened. I was a, a creative vacuum with this very thick glass. And the glass was this thick. You wouldn't think that you could break glass that thick. But if the vacuum is strong enough and you neglect to vent the vacuum, the glass will implode. That's how strong air pressure is. And that's what happened. There was this loud explosion. And um, what struck me was that I knew, the minute I heard the sound, I knew what I had done wrong. It was that quick. But I didn't know what was going to happen as a consequence. Would I get hurt? You know, would the glass go flying? And so I was really struck that that awareness at the moment of an accident was that sudden. And that many people must have had that awareness. And maybe the outcome wasn't good. And so I thought it was important. And then I was struck afterwards by the fact that all the scientists in the hall came running down the hall to help me, instead of fleeing me in terror. <laughs> and the day comes where I feel that I have a metaphor for something else I want to express that's um, emotional. Uh, you know, I was having a period of, um, of angst, we'll say, artistic sure. angst. And that lent itself to that um, experience. Where I started painting, I was a cartoonist. That's what I thought I was going to be. Uh, I liked the narrative component, and that shows up on my paintings. And I was very influenced by Mad Magazine when I was young. <laughs> and, yes, and um, underground cartoons. And uh, so, uh, and they're quick. So uh, I thought I was going to be a cartoonist, but my cartoons became very elaborate. And then one day, uh, I saw a painter's work in Los Angeles, F. Scott Hess, and he's a representational painter. And um, I looked at his work and I went, wait a minute, I could be doing paintings. That's what I should be doing. I'm actually a fine artist. Uh, here, I went out for six months. I kept a typing book and I hiked out there and I drew that beach because if you just take photos, I think it's going to be stiff. And then I take videos as well as photos because I finished the painting in Seattle. And um, videos are especially interesting if you're using a model because you don't get that stiffness. I use myself as a model, so I'm always have a mirror or a camera and I'm always you know, <laughs> twisting around <laughs> in my studio. And I, I really have to get these things off my computer so that I'm not embarrassed later. <laughs> Los Angeles. Okay. And I started this a long time ago, and I did this on plein air. I dragged this canvas out oh, every day in my van. I was set up on my walking trail. I would paint, uh, you know, I'd take it from uh, section to section. Yes, I went to Eagle Rock. Oh, what? yes. Yeah. Did I store? Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, in spring it's green. Yes. There's a, and um, <laughs> what struck me then was that. Excuse me, through the smog. Yeah, yes. <laughs> the light comes small. along the hill and it hits that yellow mustard mm -hmm. sunset and it looks fluorescent. So those are my colors. Women of a certain age, <laughs> you, um, kind of looking back at your life or subject matter, or are you looking forward to subject matter? That's a very interesting question. Um, uh, I'm very much looking forward and I feel with energy all the time. What does it mean to paint for yourself? Uh, well, you have to know yourself. That's actually an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I actually think very few people do paint for themselves. I think, I can't speak for other people, but looking at other people from the outside, it often seems to be that it's hard for people to know their own thoughts, but that can be very mm -hmm. difficult. Um, we're awash in the things we read, the things we hear. And it's hard to hear yourself. Um, and I think if you can, that's 